Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Barbecue Chicken Sandwich. Well today we're gonna be smoking up a couple of whole chicken spatchcock style on the Yoder Smokers Loaded Wichita Offset Smoker. And not just any offset smoker, but the first ever Yoder Smokers manufactured. This is cereal number one, which is always exciting to cook on. Now after we get these birds smoked up, we're gonna pull all the meat, we're gonna create a really delicious barbecue chicken sandwich. Super simple, super tasty, but before we can get to that, we gotta light the fire. So let's get to burning some sticks. All right, well, we're gonna start by loading up a charcoal chimney. Get a couple starter cubes down here. Pop our chimney down right on top of there. Load it up with our Kamado Joe big block charcoal. All the way full and we'll just wait until our embers are nice and hot. Now we've got the charcoal, it's almost white to the top, it's ready to dump out. Now when it comes to running a fire on an offset, I like to run a small hot fire toward the back of the firebox. So we're just going to kind of move all our coals to the back half. I'm going to add a few more good sized chunks of our big block just to slowly burn down while this comes up to temp. We'll go ahead and throw a log of pecan wood on there. And then toward the front half of this firebox, I'm going to keep a log here at all times to warm up. We'll keep one right on top to warm up as well. The reason we want to warm up our sticks of wood before we throw them on the fire is so that they're already hot when they hit the coals and they can ignite instantly. That makes sure that we don't have any of that blue smoke chugging through the smoker. We get clean white smoke all the time. Now when you're cooking on a pellet grill, you always have that clean smoke. It's pellet hits the fire, instantly combusts, air is always moving. You got to take a little more care when you're doing something on a stick burner like this. So anytime we can take a step to make the smoke cleaner and the end product better, we're going to do that. And initially I like to just leave the door open a little bit so that that fire gets some good auction to kick everything off. We'll shut that down as soon as the thing comes up to temp. Today I want to smoke these birds at about 275 to 300 degrees and we've come up to that temperature now so I'm going to close up the firebox and start to adjust our airflow so that we can stabilize it right where we want it. All right now let's get into prepping up those birds. So we got a couple of whole birds here about four and a half pounds each. And to prepare these spatchcock style, if you haven't seen this before, what we're doing is we're just coming and cutting down right along the side of the backbone. Now, a lot of you guys are familiar with this already, uh, and I really feel like this is my favorite way to cook a whole bird. So if you haven't tried it yet, it's definitely worth it. How I like to cook my turkeys as well. So just keeping right along the side of that backbone there. Fully remove that backbone. And this backbone's great for making chicken stock with, so you can hang on to those and save them up. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up on the back, but you could do as little or as much as you want, really. Uh, I'm gonna get, go ahead and get rid of these bones that uh, I cut through. We don't need those poking out. You come down here to this end, you kinda got all this flappy stuff. If you wanna cut out some of the ribs, you can do that. Again, this is kind of all optional, but we're going to get rid of this stuff in the end anyway, so it doesn't hurt to get rid of it now. And when you're spatchcocking birds, there's kind of two ways you can end up with the quarters here attached. So this is fully unattached or fully detached from the carcass, I should say. This side's still hanging on by a bone that runs right down here next to the backbone. And if you want to leave it there, you can, but if you want to cut it out now to make things easier later, you can do that as well. You're just going to cut right along the side of it, and you're going right along the side of that ball joint as well. So really not losing any meat there. So that looks pretty good. We've opened those thighs up so that we can kind of get in there and season all of the surfaces of the meat there, which is great. One of the reasons I like to clean it up. Now coming to the other side, what we want to do is release the skin from the flesh so we can get some seasoning underneath there as well. 
For the thighs, it's really easy. You're just gonna push out like this. Now you've exposed the thigh meat and the leg meat. Once I've done that, I like to take both these legs and lift them up toward the top of the breast and start to pull that breast skin back. So I won't go all the way, but almost to the top, and then we'll come at it from the other side. Got a bunch of fat in here that can come out. Cut it out or pull it out by hand. And again, we're just right in here, releasing that skin from the breast, and now you can get some seasoning down in there. All right, so these are pretty much ready to go. One more thing that I like to do to help these really lay flat is get my scissors in there right at that breastbone and just give it a little snip. Now these things can lay totally flat. And now our breasts are all on roughly the same surface as our thighs so that they can cook in the same amount of time. Today we're gonna to be injecting these birds and we do that for a couple of reasons. One, it adds a lot of extra flavor, uh, especially with the ingredients that we're using today. And it's gonna be super simple, three ingredients, tons of flavor. The other reason we do it is to make sure that this bird ends up as juicy and moist as possible. All right. So we're gonna go for a good balance of fruitiness, sweetness, uh, saltiness, and a little bit of spice. Our base is peach nectar today. A really unique flavor that tastes fantastic on chicken. I'm gonna go with a cup of that peach nectar. And then we're gonna to add to that a couple teaspoons each of yard bird by Plowboys, fantastic chicken rub. And a little spice and a little vinegar with a couple teaspoons of Killer Hogs hot sauce. We'll stir to dissolve what we can in the yard bird. We're still gonna have some chunks in there, very small particulate that will be just fine in the injector needle. All right, so we're gonna load up the pistol grip injector and I'll get started on this guy going into the breast. We're just gonna get in there, create a little pocket, fill that pocket up. When it's full, it'll start to come back out. Since we're over here by the wing, we might as well give him a little bit of love. So I'm just kind of working in a grid to cover all of the meat. And we'll have to show this when it's finished, but uh, the chicken inside, you know, it's pur purely white when it's all the way cooked. It's gonna have this gnarly peach juice color to it, which looks really rad. You won't ever notice it once you get into your barbecue sandwich because we're gonna shred it all up. It's gonna come in from both sides of the chicken leg here, one pump in the center. And now the great thing about all of this is it retains this juice, and even if it comes out as we start shredding it, you just work it right back into the meat. Now we're gonna hit it with the seasoning, and we're gonna start on the back side. We're using that yard bird once again, the Plowboys yard bird. Going for the back side of the thighs, this bit of breast that's exposed at the top, and then we'll flip it over. We'll hit the top of the legs and thighs there, and then we can cover those back up. And pull those up and get the breast meat exposed. Full coverage there. Coming down from the top. And then we'll go ahead and hit the skin. Pretty easy. Now these are just about ready to go. Might just tuck these wing tips back to kind of hold all that in together. But these are ready to go to the smoker. I want to place these birds right here on the top. I love the way the smoke rolls over them from below and then heads out toward the stack. We'll just go side by side for now. 
we can always rotate later to even out the cook. I'm just gonna let these things sit in here and soak up the smoke for a while. We're gonna keep tending that fire. We're checking on it every 30 to 45 minutes to so roll another log over, try and keep our temperature perfectly steady. And then we'll keep an eye on the birds. We'll probably look at them about 45 minutes into the cook, see if we wanna change the way they're situated because the color happens a little bit differently. With the fire down at the far side, you've got a hot spot down here. And as it leaves out the stack, you've got a warmer spot up here. So we're gonna take all that into account, sit back and enjoy the day. We're about 45 minutes into the cook now, so like I said, we want to take a look, see if we want to rotate these birds around a little bit. They're looking pretty good, but I don't think it would hurt to spin everything around. Yeah, and you can see on this bird that's closer to the fire, we're getting some great color down here on the thighs, a little bit lighter on the left side. So I think we'll just go ahead and flip these. And while we're at it, might as well roll another log over. The other component in our chicken sandwich today is the slaw. We're doing a blue cheese slaw to go on top of our barbecue chicken. So I'm gonna get that prepped up while the chicken's smoking away so it has a little time to sit and soak up all that slaw dressing. So what we have here is a head of Savoy cabbage. I'm gonna get this thing quartered down probably end up needing about half of it for this recipe. We're looking to get four cups of thinly sliced cabbage. Next for this slaw, we're gonna do some carrots, about one cup of carrots to four cups of cabbage. Now for the dressing, we're essentially just making a chipotle blue cheese dressing, which is very versatile. You can use it on this slaw, but you can also just use it to dip your wings in, any number of things. We're starting off with a cup of sour cream. I'm gonna add to that a third cup of mayonnaise, a few tablespoons of buttermilk. I've got one chipotle chili and adobo sauce. a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, a little bit of white wine vinegar, and some blue cheese crumbles. Now, if you want it to be a little bit chunky, just add about half your blue cheese now and the other half after we blitz this down. One more thing, we've got a clove of garlic. Just gonna crush that and peel it and give it a rough chop, and then we'll take care of it when we blitz the whole dressing all together. We got that smoothed out a bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked salt, a little bit of black pepper. Woo! <laughs> and we're gonna blitz it one more time. taste. Mm. We haven't added the rest of the blue cheese crumbles back yet, which is good because I think it could use this a little bit more of that funk. But I'm going to go ahead and dress the salad. We'll kind of crush it all together and then we'll add the blue cheese and mix that in a little bit more gently. So you can give it a little squeeze. It's not gonna hurt anything to break down those cell walls. Just a little bit, start to soften the slaw. And then we'll take the rest of that blue cheese, and mix that in. Mm. This will be a really great funky little slaw to go on top of our sweet and smoky chicken. 
So I'm gonna wrap this up, throw it into the fridge, and be ready to go when our chickens come off the smoker. Well, our birds have come up to temp. They're right around 160 in the breast, which is what we're looking for. It's been about three hours, but there's a lot of variables. I've also got this cook done in about two hours in the past. So you just wanna keep an eye on it. Try to keep it as consistent as possible. But the most important thing is that finishing temperature in the breast, 160. So through rotating these birds, Partway through that cook, we've kind of kept their temperatures pretty even. One's just a couple degrees ahead of the other one. We also threw on some of these kielbasa just to go along with our chicken sandwiches. Maybe we'll get crazy and throw some on a bun with our chicken. So we're going to go right into how to break one of these birds down after you've got it smoked for pulled chicken for sandwiches. Look at that, just falling apart already. Now these are going to be... 175 plus, which is great for dark meat. They get super velvety once it passes that 170 mark. And our breast should be just super tender, dead on and juicy. So I'm just picking all of the meat from the bones. You can set those bones aside and discard them. We don't need those any longer. And we open up the breasts and crack this guy open. And you're just going to see juice come pouring out of there. Look at that. And make sure to keep that go right on top of all that dark meat. So there's that wild color we were talking about from the peach injection. But just look how juicy and tender this is. That finishing temperature is key. But adding that injection adds so much in the way of flavor and ensures you don't dry your chicken out. And this stuff shreds right apart by hand. I swear every time I get to the wing on a smoked bird and I go to pull it to put it in there, I can't wait. Woo! I can actually taste the injection because we pumped it right in the center there. That's a smoky tidbit, but that meets some of my favorite meat. So I'm just going to run this back through the juices that have collected as we shred this. Kind of rehydrates every bit of that. And then I'm going to come in here and get some barbecue sauce on there. I've got the Firebug Hot today, a great sweet sauce with a fruitiness to it, which should go well with the peach that we've already put in there and just toss all of that to coat. I'm not trying to soak it, but I do want to coat our chicken with a little bit of sweetness. All right, I'm going to start building these sandwiches, starting with some spicy dill pickles on the bottom. I like to load them up. Then we'll come in with our sweet and smoky pulled chicken. I'm going to top that off with our slaw. I'm not usually huge on sauces, but I love a little bit of mustard sauce with this barbecue chicken sandwich. I love the tang and the sweetness it brings. Just another element to add to the flavor profile. Now we just need some of that blue cheese slaw. It's a beautiful looking chicken sandwich. All right, I saved one back so we could try out our little sausage chicken burger. That looks like it desperately needs a little bit of mustard right on top of that. bit of chicken there. Pickles on top. Switch it up, huh? All right, I just want to, you know how I like to see the profile. Let's open this baby up. That looks like it needs a bite taken out of it. Ooh! 
That's juicy. It's not going to be clean to eat. Man, it tastes good. That chicken is so smoky. The pretzel bun holds everything together, which is really cool. And the slaw cools things off. Just a little bit of funkiness from that blue cheese. Pretty much all I could ask for. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video, or just click that link in the video description down below. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.